Sprout Blend is a high-powered liquid food and biostimulant for both crops and soil. It is completely unique to the bionomic growing system, and it's a big part of the reason for the super nutrition to be found in bionomic produce. When the soil minerals have been built up and balanced and air has been incorporated deep in the soil, Sprout Blend causes a literal explosion of the beneficial soil microbes that manufacture vitamins and complex organic nutrients in the soil. These are then taken up by the plants. Microbes often bloom in the soil to the point of becoming visible with the naked eye. During the summer of 2000, we contracted a food lab in San Francisco to test bionomic lettuce versus store-bought organic lettuce. The beta-carotene in the bionomic lettuce was twice the level of the organic lettuce, and vitamin C was close to six times as high. Before you use this powerful product in your garden, please do read the warning in your manual. Used correctly, Sprout Blend is a powerful product, but misused, it could actually become dangerous to you. Please refer to the manual and follow it closely. Actually making Sprout Blend is the height of simplicity. All you're going to need is a jar, container, or something to hold the seed as you sprout it. Usually I use five-gallon buckets. In this case, we've used a glass jar so that you can see the process a little bit better. You're going to use a blend of different grains. Refer to your manual for details. Here we have four different grains that we're going to add to our container. That's the first one. Second one will go in. The third and the fourth. Once they're all in, we're going to cover these with a volume of water twice as much at least as the amount of grain that we've put in. The reason for that is, is that as seeds sprout, as some of you will know if you do sprouting at home, they literally double in volume. That's all we're going to do for now. We're going to actually put this into a cool, dark place. 70 degrees is optimum. Again, all of the details are in your manual, so please refer back to that. We'll come back in eight hours, which is the optimum length of time for the soaking process, and we'll show you what to do from there. Well, it's eight hours later. Our seeds have been soaking now and have about doubled in volume, and it's time to pour the soak water off. And instead of just pouring it down the drain as you would if you were sprouting for human consumption, we're going to save it in a bucket because every seed is covered with the beneficial microbes and bacteria that are good for the soil and good for your plants. And you're going to be inoculating the soil with this sprout blend mixture as well as feeding it. And so we're going to save this water. We've put a colander into our bucket here because you notice as we're pouring it off we're losing some of our seeds and so that keeps it from going down into the bucket. You want to make sure that you get every last bit of water out because if there's still water and I turn this jar back over again it's going to pool in the bottom and where the seeds are sitting in water they're going to drown and they're going to die. They need air to breathe. They're actual living organisms just like you and I. Now I'm going to take the seeds that the grain that is in the colander and we're going to get this back into the jar. Okay, we've got our seeds back in, but you see how they're sticking onto the sides. And so I'm just going to tap that jar and make sure that they're all knocked down. Might even just push a few stubborn ones down by hand because if they're left up here, they're going to dry out. And again, they're going to die as a result because they need both air and water. Now we're going to cover them to make sure that we don't get too much uh, loss of moisture through evaporation and also to block out excess light because the best development of vitamin content and so on happens actually 
in low light or even in dark. So we're going to cover this, put it in a cupboard or a dark area, and we'll come back and rinse these morning and evening until they have reached the point at which we're going to stop the sprouting process. We'll show you that later. Well, our grain is in the process of sprouting. And it's important to realize that this sprouting process is a living process. The grain needs continual moisture. That's why we're going to rinse at least twice a day, morning and evening, to keep it from drying out. Another important reason for the rinsing is that in the process of sprouting and growing, these seeds are generating heat, just like animals and humans do in the process of living. The soap water helps to cool the seeds down. But because we're using the same soak water over and over to rinse twice a day over a period of a couple of days, sometimes the water can get so warm that it's not doing its job of cooling the seeds down adequately. And the seeds get too hot, uh, they'll actually begin to cook themselves. And so in that case, we're not going to keep our soak water in the bucket. We're going to pour it off into a nice pitcher. This is actually um, a product that um, is called Rejuvelac in human health circles, and you could actually use this internally to help to replenish the, the uh, beneficial microbes in your, in your intestinal tract. So you don't have to worry about putting in your refrigerator. This is absolutely good food for both your garden and even for you if you wanted to use it. So we're going to take this and put it in the refrigerator right now so that it will stay nice and cool. Now that our soak water, which is now our rinse water, has been nicely chilled, we're going to use it to do our rinsing. It's just a simple process of pouring that water back over the sprouts. And now we've got a small strainer to catch the grain as we pour the water back off. Again, making sure that we get every last drop of water out of the drawer, the bucket, or whatever container that you're using so that there won't be a pool of water at the bottom causing the seeds to drown. Okay? It's still flowing. So I'm going to get every last bit out. And there it's stopping now. And so we can turn it back. Make sure you get all the water out of the strainer. Dump that grain back. Well, our sprouts are all ready for blending. The way you know is by looking at the length of the little roots that come out. If you come up close, you can see here that the little roots that are coming out are roughly averaging around about a quarter of an inch in length or maybe an eighth of an inch between an eighth to a quarter of an inch in length. The reason we stop the sprouting process at that point is that between one eighth to a quarter of an inch length of root is where the enzyme levels of these grains and legumes are at the very highest level. That's very important as we mentioned in the manual, and I won't go into the details of that again, just refer back to your manual to understand the importance of the enzymes. Enzymes are destroyed at very low heat levels, and so we want to be aware as we get ready to start our blending process that we don't let it get too hot. We're going to want to use cold water. In fact, uh, it wouldn't even hurt if you had a few ice cubes in there. Um, because you don't want that temperature to get much above 100 degrees because you're going to start to get some destruction on your enzymes. Now, I found that the best proportions for blending in any kind of blender at all uh, will be one cup of finished sprouts to two cups of water. And in this case, we've got a Vitamix, which is a really high-powered blender and does a very, very good job of li liquefying the sprout blend. But you can even use a regular 
kitchen blender. The only difference is, is that the finished product may not be quite as liquefied and you might need to strain the finished product or you might need to just make sure that uh, whatever you're using to water the finished sprout blend onto your garden has large enough holes in the rows that the um, solid material can go right through. Okay, I always like to start my blender down on a lower speed so it doesn't just kick up too badly and then I'll go up to full high speed. That's gone long enough. You can tell easily because we've got a beautiful white liquid. It hasn't gotten too hot. And if you come in real close, you'll see that it looks almost just like beautiful frothy milk. That is finished sprout blend. Now, I want to point out one other thing to you. If you make enough sprout blend in one batch at a time so that you have extra left over, because as you'll see when we go outside, this little bit of sprout blend is going to be diluted and it will cover quite a, a significant area. So these sprouted grains will last for a while. What you can do is with the extra that you don't put onto your garden or to your flats right away, you can measure it out in one cup batches in little Ziploc bags and these can go right into your freezer. Then, next week, if you do it on a one-week schedule or a two-week schedule, all you have to do is go to your freezer, pull out your frozen sprout blend, put it right into your blender with the water, and in just a few seconds, you have finished sprout blend. So you don't have to go through the entire sprouting process every single week, even if you're on a one-week application schedule. The simplest way to apply sprout blend to your beds evenly and precisely is with a simple plastic two gallon watering can. In this case you want a rose that's not going to be too fine. You want the holes to be large enough so that if you have any uh, solid matter that didn't get thoroughly liquefied and blended in the blending process it'll still go right through. What we're going to do is we're going to pour this sprout blend into the bottom Actually, you'll find that there's a little bit of foaming. You think that it would almost be better to put the water in first and the sprout blend second, but I still uh, will put it in first because then as I put my water in and fill it up, uh, it thoroughly mixes at the same time. I don't have to come behind and stir it. Okay, so we're going to fill this up. And what I have applied here has been um, one cup of sprout blend to two gallons of water. That's a good average dilution rate for many circumstances, but your manual has very detailed application rates for different soils, different crops, and different situations. Make sure that you refer back to those application charts, and by all means, I can't say it too many times, please pay attention to the warnings as far as over application of this very very powerful pro product. Okay, once you have mixed it, it's just a simple process of applying it evenly. You want to keep it moving and you want to get the same amount of this material on all parts of the bed. Uh, two gallons is actually enough to cover 50 square feet of bed. This little bed here is not 50 square feet, so I'm not going to put on the entire two gallons, but I'm going to make sure I've got as much on this side as I put on the other side. As long as your potting mix has all the other nutrients that it needs, Sprout Blend is a fantastic supplemental food and growth stimulant for your seedlings too. So you can apply it on a regular basis throughout the 30 days that your seedlings are going to be growing. 
But one thing that you want to pay attention to is if you do wind up getting a contamination with uh, the fungus that causes damping off disease, you'll know when you have it because you'll see your little seedlings just keel over and die. Uh, you want to stop the sprout blend right away because it's going to be feeding that fungus as well as the other microbes and you want to start using a ideally a six percent hydrogen peroxide solution put it in a little pump spray bottle what you do is you go to a health food store or some other place where you can get 35 percent food grade hydrogen peroxide dilute that down to a six percent six percent solution spray that on it will kill the damping off disease another thing that you can use is a dilute chamomile tea. I believe the details of this are all in your manual as well. Both the chamomile tea and the hydrogen peroxide solution are completely natural products that you can use that will absolutely kill and knock out uh, this damping off disease. Applying the sprout blend onto the flat is exactly the same principle as putting onto the bed. You just want to make sure that you get an even amount over your entire flat. You could actually substitute water with sprout blend in it at least once or twice a week in place of your regular watering. Don't overdo it though because then you will encourage uh, fungal growth and problems. That's basically all there is to it. Very simple. I hope you've enjoyed watching this educational video as much as we've enjoyed putting it together. Knowledge doesn't really become full understanding until you put it into practice. So I want to encourage you to get outdoors as soon as you can to start preparing your soil to feed your plants with the highest levels of health-giving nutrition possible. As you do, you'll see, feel, taste, and experience the positive impact the bionomic system can make on your physical, mental, and spiritual wellness. I'll let Harold King explain the real reason the bionomic system produces the results it does in the garden and in people's lives. Hi, my name is Harold King. I'm a Baptist pastor from the Middle Tennessee area. Several years ago as I began to experience some problems with my health, the Lord blessed me as I began to search for ways that would be uh, in obedience to his word uh, and things that I had not known, God led me to become acquainted with Brother Ian Jones. I was tremendously blessed as I attended his school in bionomic gardening. As he began to teach me God's laws, it just began to hit my heart the truth of what Brother Ian has learned and what he's passing on to so many other people that in this day when man has his mind and his attention on the stars, we've overlooked the soil. God's precious, precious soil that he has given us, he, he actually took us from it in the beginning and formed us, and in that soil, this ecosystem that Brother Ian teaches us about, God provided everything that our bodies need. If we'll just be obedient to Him, we've not given attention to God's wonderful soil and the way that we can grow plants that will replenish our bodies and provide all the nutrition, the vitamins, the minerals, everything that man has tried to substitute in many other ways. The answer is right at our feet. And I'm thankful for the humility and for the wisdom that God has given Brother Ian and that he's able to teach people like me and so many others that God's way is not just the best way, it's the only way. And I heartily recommend it.
Hi, my name is James Volpe. I'm from Parsons, Tennessee. A few years ago, I tried gardening. Don't have a green thumb to begin with. I tried it by good effort, and I came away very discouraged. We made a lot of mistakes in the gardening program, and I just grew very discouraged. But this past year, we have double-digged our gardens. We have tomatoes growing. We have squash growing. We have cucumbers growing, peppers. Our garden looks a whole lot better this year than it has before in many, many years because of my experience there at the Voice of Nature gardening program. I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the program. Both the spiritual and the physical emphasis of the whole program is one you just wouldn't want to miss. In the past when we tried to grow things, uh, the plants hard to get to half height and the bugs literally will eat them up. In Tennessee here there's a lot of bugs. These even in spite of being started fairly late have only very minor bug damage. You can see a few little holes here and there, but it, it hasn't slowed it down a bit. Grasshoppers go on it, but they don't appear to, to eat it up for some reason. You know, we work so hard, put so much time and effort and money into the old way of gardening, and it just was not working. And look at it, look at the difference. Much easier. We're very pleased with how this has turned out. We're very happy with the results, and we highly recommend the, the program. Highly recommend it. It works. And it's wonderful. And praise the Lord. Dear Ian, your tapes and book and video have increased my level of hope about my garden. You have given me the reasons why one should make the suggested changes, and you've helped me start preparing next year's beds. You have given me a love for plants that I never had before and helped me improve my current food preparation practices. And as a strange side benefit, I quit biting my fingernails. Your descriptions of the communication of thought affecting plants gave me a greater respect for every living cell. I have come to realize that gardening is as profound a subject as one can find anywhere. Thank you. We would love to hear your testimony. Plant a Bionomic Garden today and bring the new Bionomic Gardening Revolution to your own backyard. Then write and tell us your experience. To order multimedia seminars, soil analysis, and other gardening aids, telephone our order line toll-free at 1-866-MY-HI-FI. -Fi. 